This is a Hobby Wing uh, 13.5. Now, all of the Hobby Wings, the laminations are exposed on the new ones. These are the V10 G4s. It's a piece of plastic around that they come with a sensor wire. The sensor wire uh, without the connectors is about uh, uh, 14 centimeters. Uh, the timing is generally set at about 40. I'm not really sure why. That's not necessarily optimal. Now, the numbers don't correlate exactly, as you will see uh, later in my data sheet. Uh, I generally start at the 30 mark, but you're going to see it's going to read differently. Uh, the 21.5, I think, reads 26 degrees at the uh, 30 mark. This one reads 25, so they're about 5 off. Uh, once you start going higher, they get a little closer, but not that much. So you really need a motor analyzer just to make sure you don't overtime them. Uh, but you can also, I guess, base it off heat. So if you're close to about 40, actually, 50 is a, a good little marker. Uh, the construction is beautiful. The timing bell is very easy. There's just two little screws, and it only moves the timing bell. It doesn't move the entire back plate uh, like the Trinity does, for example, or some other motor designs. Uh, the front of the motor is very nice, too. Uh, there's a lot of uh, fins and surface area for dissipating heat compared, again, to some of the other motors. Uh, just the construction in general is a very good motor. One of the things that I like too when I took it apart, and you're going to see at the end of the video, is the difference in how this thing is shimmed. And there was something that I found that I was pleasantly surprised. Uh, so generally when I'm running these tests, I will generally start at 30. Uh, if you look at the, I don't remember if it's the 21.5 or 17.5, I didn't bother with 30. I think I set the end bell at 35, which read about 30. Uh, so that's something to keep in mind. It is very common for people to overheat these motors because they overtime them, right? They'll put them at 55, and next thing you know, you're at 61 degrees, which isn't good. Uh, but I'm going to do a quick data comparison and then show you how this one stacks up based on the analyzer compared to other ones. But here we go. So in some other videos, I've done comparisons of some of these motors. These are some of the 13.5s, and here's the data. So you can... Uh, check out the other videos, or you can just look at this data table. Uh, but uh, the hobby wing is right here. And the hobby wing is, looks like it's more of an RPM motor. Now, I'm going to go ahead and ignore these uh, after a while, but I just want to point out something here. So if we look at this 5.1, we are at 3,899, so almost 3,900 kVs. Uh, here, uh, 5.1, this would be uh, just under 3,400, uh, but also comparing the timing, 37 uh, versus 40. Now, this is a massive rotor. This is a 13.5 on the X factor. So these are some tests that I did. 11.5, uh, you can do the same thing. So f uh, there really isn't a 4.6, but 3.5, 3. Point, well, between these two. So it would be, let's just say, 3,725, somewhere around there. Uh, so this motor, this is a really small motor. This is definitely an RPM motor. So you can see how this one just revs uh, really high. So that's something that you have. Uh, this one happens to have the same diameter as the stock rotor. So we will be comparing it to the stock rotor. And uh, so I'll go ahead and delete these for now. All right, just so these can be closer. And here we go. So these are three different motors. Uh, generally, one of the things that you're going to have is the greater the diameter of the uh, rotor, uh, slower it's going to be, but more torque. Or uh, the higher the gauss, uh, the lower the kV. But uh, again, you're probably going to have more torque. Uh, so if you want more RPM, you need either a thinner rotor or actually a weaker magnet. But keep in mind that's not that doesn't always translate to speed because it could be faster no load, but as soon as you apply load, the weight of the car, it could drastically slow down. So it just becomes it becomes a game uh, of picking the correct RPM and the gear ratio. Uh, so then you have to look at your FDR, your final drive ratio. Uh, but here we go. So we have these here. So this is a Trinity X-Factor stock. And the closest thing I have is a 4.9. So 4.9, we're looking at about 
3712 and uh, that 4.9 well compared to this so here it's almost a 200 kV difference but if we brought this to a um, four uh, sorry 5.1, uh, there would still be quite a big difference and the reason why is here we have a 5.6 amp and here the motor is going to run hot so a full race it's going to run quite hot uh, and here we're looking at 47 timing here only 40 degrees timing uh, so if compared to this 40 degrees uh, that's a large difference in, as far as timing but notice the amps the amps are lower uh, so uh, those are some of the trade-offs. Now, if you have lower timing, lower timing generally does a little more torque because you're pulling the rotor a longer distance uh, versus higher timing, uh, but higher timing's going to rev higher again. You have some of these things. So really, I would look at the amps and then I would go across. So closest thing would be this. Uh, so there's a significant difference. I would ignore the RPM. RPM RPM's just a product of voltage, unless the voltage is the same, uh, 75, 76, so it's not the same. Uh, the, these are not really going to correlate. You could calculate mathematically. Uh, but here we go. So at this point, uh, we have about 100 kV more. Oh, wait, no, sorry, I'm looking at the wrong one. This is 3.8, so one less amp, and we have 100 kV more. So it's about the same kV for one amp less, but here we go. So this is approximately the same amps, uh, and we're over 100 kV. So realistically, this would be about 175 kV more. Now multiply that times your voltage. That's quite a difference in RPM. You're looking at about 1,000 RPM more uh, with this one. So there is going to be some gearing involved. Uh, it all depends on how far the straightaway is uh, for speed. So the X factor will more than likely it has a stronger rotor. If I had to uh, compare this one, now this is the Team Powers. This is the old version. Uh, we have a 4.8, which is the closest thing. This is 4,000 kV. Uh, now the Trinity definitely has a stronger rotor than this one and this one is at 47 and uh, 47 degrees uh, here we go so this would be 47 but this one this one's already over five if you're running between five and six you're just going to need to cool the motor so make sure you have a very efficient high flow fan uh, but this is a safer amperage so 4.9 would be safer this one's too low, 5.1, that's that's good enough. Uh, but let's compare, all right, so we have the KV. Okay, so 40 degree, 47 degrees, uh, 4,000, and we are looking at 40 degrees uh, under 4,000. Uh, so if we bumped up the timing a little, I don't think it's going to be this many KVs, but then again, this is going to be a stronger motor than this one and this one's going to be a stronger than the rest so this one's somewhere in between uh, this is going to be a high revving motor in comparison and as you saw the previously the other two uh, rotors that I compared the high revving versus the high torque uh, you see that correlation as well now the main thing I like about the hobby link to be honest is the construction uh, the construction is very nice these hobby wing motors are actually constructed very nicely. So I took one apart. Uh, this, these little tabs just go in here. This is where the screws go and they, they screw on right in here. So that is one of the differences. The hobby wing still using these long screws. Just be careful, they can stretch. Uh, but the construction, this is just such a beautiful piece. Uh, this is flat uh, compared to uh, for example, I did not take this one, uh, did not unsolder it, but this one's not flat. I really don't know if it makes a difference or not, but you can see uh, the distance, the little waves there. Uh, so you can see there is material covering the laminations, and that's aluminum. Uh, is that going to affect it much? I'm not really sure, but I do like the material in the end bell. Uh, this looks like it will 
work as a heat sink compared to this one. Uh, just offers more surface area here compared to this. So I'm thinking the Hobby Wing will probably be better at cooling, just running cooler, uh, which is very nice. Uh, this goes in here, uh, all the turns, everything looks very well, very well made. I'm actually quite impressed. Uh, I do like the Hobby Wing ESCs. I actually really like the Hobby Wing ESCs. Uh, one of the things that I was surprised though is I removed the rotor. This is this is the only shim. It's just this. There's nothing here in the back. This is actually quite small uh, compared to some of the other motors. For example, Trinity Motors I actually have. Uh, let's see. Uh, I have a rotor. That's not the stock rotor though. Here it is. It's right over here. So this is a Trinity rotor and a Trinity rotor. Uh, so you see the shims that it comes with. So there's four little brass shims. Uh, the amount of shimming is actually quite large. Now I'm not going to put these close, but you can see the there's a difference in diameter. I'm trying not to get these close because they're magnets. Uh, it appears to be a difference, but there's a massive difference in length in this part here. Uh, so let me go ahead and all right. So this is the Trinity. So it's about three point. It's about a three millimeter. Now this other section over here is about a four point seventy eight. 25. Now I really shouldn't measure this because it's not the same. Uh, the, these, well, no, actually this comes in the 13.5. I don't remember what comes in the 13.5, but since I opened the 13.5, that's why. So this is supposed to be three millimeters. All right, so that's normal. Now, uh, the brass bushing is 4.29 and this is approximately 24.5 this length. Now the entire thing, I'm curious, right here, magnetic part is 28. Let's see, that sits perfectly. All right, so 27.8 roughly. And overall, uh, 62.85. So that is interesting. But like I said, the main thing is there's no more, uh, this one doesn't use shims for the rear part of the motor, which is wonderful. And then the shim in the front is small, very small. Uh, let's see, I completely missed. All right, so I'll put this one away. Now I'm gonna look at the hobby one. So the hobby wing, Here's the shim. Shim is very small. This is maybe two millimeters at most, maybe 1.5. Oh, it's not even a millimeter. I was way off. Uh, so it's less than a millimeter for the shim. This whole area in front. Well, I guess if I measure from the front of that, all right, so about 20, 25. Uh, now let's go ahead and put the shim back on just so I don't lose it. Now let's see, this rotor, this is a 12.5 rotor. All right, 12.5, let me see. All right, so that was a good comparison with the other one. And although the other one's a 12.3. Uh, but the mag the magnet uh, with this part is twenty seven ninety eight. Uh, if I get rid of this, okay, so just that part is about twenty five forty five, somewhere around there. Now it's supposed to be a uh, it says twelve point five, but it looks like a twelve twenty four. So it's the same same diameter as that other one. So this was actually a good comparison as far as measurements. Uh, so that's good. So why does it say 
12.5. Uh, maybe it's 12.5 here at the collar. Uh, oh, I think I did an overall. Oops. Let me zero this out. Oops. Zero it out. Ah. Fifty-five eighty-seven. Fifty-five eighty-seven. Uh, but these things are nice. Now, if we look at the sensor board, uh, they are. I'm not. I don't want to put the calipers here. So they're about the same depth. This one looks shorter than this one. That's just because of this end plate down here. So if I were to go something like this, uh, this one's actually shorter. Uh, let's see, that's probably, let's see if I can get them in the camera. Uh, so there isn't much difference, but that's what we have. Uh, so those are some of the differences. Now this one, uh, it's just the two, these two screws you loosen and then this just spins really easily. Uh, this one, some of them are a little tougher than others to actually rotate, uh, which is not a big deal. You can just use pliers, set them in here and turn them. Uh, but I actually do like the hobby wind construction. Now, uh, like I said, it does use these screws versus this just uses the screws in the M bell. Uh, so this is one of the differences. If you look at this construction versus this construction, you can see the difference with the laminations. Uh, and let's see, so we have 35.8 and just need to measure part without tape. And there we go. 35.9, almost 36. Uh, but part of the difference is going to come from this, you know, about a millimeter 70 thickness here. Uh, but the main thing, like I said, only testing will tell. But the main thing is that uh, larger surface area on the front, uh, which I find to be important because usually the cooling fan goes off to the side. Some people mount it in the rear, but not really in the front. So that increased surface area will help with heat dissipation. Uh, it should and that's quite a lot of material. So most of this material went to the front of the motor where everything can dissipate. So if you have, for example, I have a shroud, it'll blow air right through these, uh, which will be fabulous. Now, as far as sensors are concerned, this one only has one sensor connection. This one has two. There's one on the bottom and there's one on the top. Uh, it does come with a little rubber piece I removed, uh, but you can, if you're using the bottom, place it on the top, it's a little dust cover or vice versa. Oh, 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 oh,